Hello and welcome back to yet another video. This is my first video in quite a while and this is going to be covering something about the new M1 Max that I know at least a good number of people want to see but haven't been able to see and that is the people in the live production crowd, the people in technical theater, the people doing live concerts, the people in churches, the people who want to see how well these computers can do things in front of a live audience. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how QLab works. We're mostly going to be talking about QLab for video. We're going to be talking about how to get more than one display out of this thing without using any display link adapters or AirPlay. We are going to talk about running uh, ProPresenter. We're going to talk about ETC EOS. We're going to talk about how running iOS apps can really help streamline your live production. And because, you know, we are living in the era we're living in, I'm going to talk about streaming with OBS using the new M1 Max because, you know, so many shows, unfortunately, cannot have a live audience, but they must go on. So, can you stream them using your M1 MacBook Pro? Well, without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that I want to talk about is QLab. Okay, so now QLab is something that I use all the time. That is one of those things that this computer had to run perfectly. Now, unfortunately, when I first got it, QLab 4.6.6, uh, which is the current stable release, just flat out does not work properly on this computer at all in terms of video. It stutters all around all over the place. However, they sent me this beta. Literally within five minutes of me sending them the email, I got this back. Figure 53 support is absolutely incredible. But yeah, let me just... uh show you that. Now before we get too far in talking about live video uh, production, projection, that sort of thing on these new M1 Max, one thing that I really need to talk about is one of the big limitations and that is the fact that in the case of the uh, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro they only allow for one display output and the Mac Mini only allows for two and of course that's really only going to be one going onto your stage because, of course, you need a display hooked up for the uh, operator to see, for you to see, for you to do anything with it. Because good luck running a show on two external screens without you being able to see anything. But there is a way around it. And this is something that I have not seen anyone talk about online. And that is these Matrox dual head to go, triple head to go quad head to go uh, video adapters. Now the way this one, this is the uh, dual head to go digital Mac edition. Now I don't think they make this anymore actually, but uh, I got this used off eBay for $60, which is a pretty good deal. It has a USB in, a display port in, and then it's got uh, two DVI outs, which of course, you know, you can modernize this thing a little bit, which is something you're gonna have to do. So you just, I've got two of these, but in my demo, I'm actually only going to end up using one because one of my displays is DVI. But you can just plug this in here, tighten this up for good measure. And I've got another one, but I'm not going to hook it up. And there you go. Now you've got HDMI and you can do two of those. And this thing will do 1080p out on both displays. Now, as far as plugging into your Mac, the thing actually comes with a DisplayPort to mini DisplayPort cable. But of course, that's not gonna work with the new Macs. Although, you know, I've got my old Mac here. We've got the uh, old school Thunderbolt ports here. And of course, it will work with these fine, or a mini DisplayPort, doesn't even need to be Thunderbolt. But, you know, it'll work with all that stuff just fine. So once again, we need to modernize it a little bit. So, I just went online. And I bought this display port to a USB-C cable here. Came with this nice little sticker that I put on there. Now I can just plug that in there. And this will plug into and work with the new M1 Max or the new Intel MacBook Pros for that matter with no problem. And then we can have two displays directly connected to the Mac. Because of course everyone, it's been plenty well documented that you can 
you know, you can use AirPlay or you can use display link adapters, but let's face it, no one in live production is going to trust, including myself, a display link adapter or a Apple TV, even, and that's not even talking about the fact that uh, performance is bad on an Apple TV, you're only getting up to 30 hertz, uh, you're getting extra lag on display link, you're just having reliability issues, and it's just not as good as being hooked up to a screen. Now let me give you a little demo of a uh, QLab real quick. I guess I should probably talk about the setup of the Matrox device just a little bit. So you need to go on their website and download Matrox PowerDesk if you're going to use it. It is it runs just fine on the M1, which is great. Uh, and then you're just gonna I'm gonna plug in my little adapter so I get USB. And then I'm going to grab this. I want to plug it into the Thunderbolt port. Actually, first I'm probably going to get my displays hooked up. So, you can see we've got our device here. I've got uh, I've got HDMI going from one of my displays, the big one, and I've got DVI going to my smaller one here. Let's just plug those on in. And then we need our USB cable, which is for powering and configuring the thing. So I'll just plug this into the back of here. And then we just need to plug this into our Thunderbolt port and this into our USB port. So now just like that we have got our two displays working. We can drag between and everything's good. Of course everything may not be good right away because everything may not be configured correctly. And you know, in order to fix that, it's pretty simple. Okay, so now we've got Matrox Power Desk up here. So this is what you use to uh, set your resolution. Now this resolution you set applies to both displays. So if we click on apply for 1600 by 900, my uh, screen recording has stopped for whatever reason when I change the resolution. But you can see it's asking us to confirm the new settings, so we'll click on confirm. And if you look up at the displays, you can see that everything here is working great. Now if we uh, open up display settings here, you can clearly see that uh, it is just seeing it as one ginormous display. It's just one super wide screen here. But uh, QLab does actually have options for dealing with that. So if I open up QLab here, this is the uh, QLab beta, we will be able to see... Let me just open up this project here. And if we open up our video surface, you can clearly see here that... Uh, we have two separate uh, surfaces, which are two separate surfaces. So if I just bring up the grid, you can see that it shows up on only that display and that it shows up on only that display. And that what we have here are partial screens. So we can go and look at our display here and do two wide. And this is what I've done, virtual screen one and two. So we can use... so. In QLab is support for these things right out of the box. So we can use two displays directly connected to our M1 Mac without any sort of software weirdness going on. So I just let, let me let me just show you how incredible this is. I have here one, two, three, four, five videos. Okay? We've got a 4K file a 720p file, or is that 1080? It might be 1080. We've got, yeah, this is a 10, this is a 1080 file. We have a 720p file, and we've got two 4K files, which these are at 50% opacity, and these snowflakes falling is, uh, it has alpha channel. It is only 720p, but it has an alpha channel. And all of these are going to be faded up, okay? Now, I'm going to hit the space bar, and watch this space 
and they just go up like that. And look at all that stuff on the screen. Really, really sorry for the glare. My goodness, this is awful. But, yeah. If we, uh, let, let's just bring a little more in. I mentioned I was going to talk about Siphon a little bit. So why don't we just use that a little bit? So let me just open up our workspace settings here and go to video and edit our surface here. Let's just add a Siphon output real quick. And if we open up a simple client, we should see our surface here from QLab. And you can see how smoothly it is running. We are outputting it to the screen. Uh, let's let the opacity, the fact that I've got a 50% opacity on this fog is really making those other videos kind of dull looking. So let's go and go to our American flag. Let's put some video effects on here, okay? Let's go ahead and add some exposure just to brighten it up a bit because it's really getting dull through the fog. And we'll do the same to our fireworks. We'll add 1.83 to our fireworks as well. So if we apply exposure and we bring it up to around 1.83. There we go. And you can see, look how smoothly everything is still going. We are screen recording on the computer. Everything on the computer, super smooth. It's absolutely insane. Also, you see that? Fan off. You see that temperature? 65. You see that battery, how it's only dropped 2% during the entire course of this video? Absolutely amazing. So you can see the answer here. The performance is absolutely incredible on this machine. Okay, so this is, this is QLab running, and it is working fantastically. Now, the current version from the website has all sorts of issues. However, this beta version it hasn't crashed on me yet. I can't say that I'd use it in a live show quite yet, but it, it's pretty cool. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention about the Matrox. Let me uh, fade these cues out here. I got some fade out cues as well. Oh, apparently it didn't uh, fade out the American flag. Oh, well. Must not have the cues right. But... Let me bring you down to the matrix here. So you'll notice that it's plugged in through all this mess. Well, we can actually simplify this a bit. The matrix does not actually have to be connected to a computer. It can be connected to any USB power source. So I'm going to just unplug all this here, get rid of this adapter. So now I'm just going to plug it into this power bank here. So it's running off of that. And I'm just going to plug this cable directly into the computer. And you'll see if we pan up. The settings are all stored in the Matrix device uh, itself. Okay, now it pinged right up. That USB power bank's almost dead. I think that it just didn't like that. I just hooked it in through uh, straight in through uh, a USB power and now it is working. It is not plugged into the computer to the USB, which honestly I think is a little more reliable. I've noticed the software actually has done some weird display flashes that I wasn't a big fan of. And also, now we can actually charge the thing because, you know, through this little silly stupid thing I gotta carry around with me all the time to do literally anything with the machine, I can't charge in this. This is only for data. This is only for data. I'd have to yeah, anyway. Uh, let's keep going a little bit with uh, some video stuff. Okay, so now I'm actually going to kind of use a bit of a combination of uh, software. I'm going to open up uh, ProPresenter now. Which, by the way, has actually been updated for native support on Apple Silicon already, which is pretty incredible. So what we have here is a very simple project because I don't really use ProPresenter. But what we're going to do here is go into Preferences, and we are going to go to Screens, Open Screen Configuration. And what we have here is just a single 1080p uh, siphon output. 
And if we open up QLab, I'm going to make a camera queue and go on into uh, siphon one. Oop, what am I doing? We need to set it to the video surface to be this guy. And now, as you can see, it is up on the screen. And it, it's dropping a couple of frames, actually, it looks like. Which is a little bit annoying. Seems to be working okay now. Let's, uh... So we have a simple client here. So we can see our QLab surface, as well as our ProPresenter surface, which you can see that it does not appear that, uh... It is ProPresenter that's causing the stutter because you can see it's perfectly smooth here. If we go over to QLab, yeah, it's not bad. And there we go. Now, keep in mind that this uh, QLab, we've got some projection mapping going on here, as you can clearly see. We We've got some projection mapping going. And if we go back over here, yeah, there we go. So you can clearly see how much of a powerhouse this thing is in such a small thing. No noise. Have you, that fan off. No noise. Staying cool, really, really, really impressive. Now, one other thing I want to check is um, I want to stop screen recording now. Just to see if that stutter goes away. It does appear that it is still there. But then again, this is a beta version of QAB. And this stutter that I'm seeing here is less than video would be on my on my Mac, on my old Mac, my 2015 13 inch. So really, really cool. Okay, so now the next thing that I wanna take a look at is EOS. And also I've turned off my camera because I don't see a point in having it rolling right now, which means we are using the MacBook Pro's inbuilt quote unquote studio microphones, which I think sound absolutely incredible. So you'll get to hear a little sample of that as well. So let's open up EOS which this is one of those pieces of software that people weren't necessarily scared would run badly. They were more concerned whether it would run at all just because ETC is ETC and they don't like new things, it seems. So we're just going to open up uh, EOS here. And I don't have anything too crazy at all going on here, but because obviously there's nothing patched. But uh, it's the keyboard shortcut for live. F1, okay. But um, I do have a couple of two lights patched, so let's just go ahead and add some more lights. So we'll add another. So we'll add channel three, and we'll put this on address 13. And it is a color source par. And we'll just add a couple more color source pars just to show that it's working. So, so four, four, at, what's the at key? Clearly you can see that I don't use this on a computer, I use it on a real console. Uh, at is A. Okay, so four, at, oh my goodness, four, at, there we go, now I've got the hang of it, 19, five, at my goodness it's patching all its dimmers why are you patching its dimmers thank you so there we go we got four lights now you can see that we've got our we can get one and we can just go ahead and let, let's just try and build a queue so if we go over into our list let's just uh, bring up Actually, let's 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 go into augmented, okay? 
that's another thing we can test out which is not something I've used before so let's see if I can figure out how to add a light let's go edit and let's see how do we add a fixture here okay oh, okay so I finally figured out how to use this guy so as you can see we can pan and tilt our light here in augmented on the M1 Mac and let's see if we can uh, change our let's see if we can make our beam a little bigger so if we go and change our zoom to maximum and let's just bring our color to more of like a whitey color you can clearly see reflected that the light has gone much bigger let's see if gobos show up on uh, augmented so if we scroll down and we try and throw a gobo in there, hey, look at that, it does work. And we can hopefully, can we adjust the edge on here? I'm not seeing that. I think, is that something you have to do through an encoder? I wouldn't expect it to be. Is edge not on here? That's something I normally do with an encoder, but whatever. Let's uh, let's try and see if we can throw an effect on this light. So if we just go into our effects and let's just have it do 901. So let's go back live and just go 5 effect 901. It is doing our effect. So there you go. You can clearly see that EOS is working perfectly fine on our M1 Mac. Let's just go. No, I don't want to. Let's just go ahead and save this guy. We will go ahead and save this file. Get out of EOS. And that wraps up the next thing. Now there is one final thing that I wanted to mention that can be really really useful in using this guy in live production. You can actually install any iPad app onto this guy. So in this case I've got IRFR Classic here which means that during an actual show because I oftentimes follow along with the light cues even though I'm not on the light board just so I can make sure that I'm on the right track I could have my uh, cues for QLab open here and I can have my uh, cue list from the light board right here next to my QLab which is really cool because typically which is what I keep doing just because they're on two separate networks the projectors and the uh, board and I'm not going to swap all that around but generally speaking I have an iPad next to me and I watch keep watch on the uh, light cues just to make sure that everything is on there just so I can make sure that I time everything correctly with fade ups and downs and that sort of thing just so that I know ahead of time all the stuff that's going on I basically treat it as my script I don't usually follow a script I just do that except for parts where I need to but uh, you can run these apps on here now you would notice that if you just go into the app store and you tried to go IRFR and go iPhone and iPad apps it uh, does not show up. What you can, however, do is go ahead and download iAmazing, and then from there you can go and go to Manage Apps after you've connected your iPhone. It'll take its time to see your apps, but from here you can actually export the uh, .dot uh, IPA files wherever they went, and you can install them on your computer as long as they're on the same iCloud account which is really cool go away done quit close now as unfortunate as it is I don't think that you can talk about live production in the year 2020 or early 2021 without mentioning live streaming as unfortunate as it is so many live events are having to be live streamed so I think we're gonna have to talk about that so 
we're going to test out streaming to YouTube using OBS and an HDMI capture device. So the uh, HDMI capture device I'm using is this little bitty cheap thing. This is a HDMI uh, video capture. You can get these on Amazon for less than $20. But I'm just going to plug this into the side of here. And let's open up OBS. And we've got a scene that is a display capture. I don't want to see that. Let's create a new scene. There we go. And we need to change a couple of settings for this. So I want the uh, output, we'll make the bitrate be oh, 3000 because my internet probably can't handle a whole lot more than that to be completely honest. And we will set our video to be 1080p and we'll go for 60 frames a second why not even though my capture card can only handle 30 but let's add a video capture device wherever you may be video capture device okay USB camera and we want you 1080p 30 So there is our HDMI capture. So I'm just going to plug my camera in over HDMI. Here is my camera. Got a HDMI cable. As you can see we're starting to have a bit of a mess out of the side of the computer now. Oh man, no, I don't want to record. I want to get to a clean view. There we go, perfect. So now we've got this camera being displayed on the computer. So let's just start streaming. And it hopefully will start coming up. Yes, it is. Alrighty. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring this guy in. We'll full screen my other computer here and we'll set it to 108060. And why does it look so terrible? Did I accidentally set the bitrate to like I accidentally set the bitrate to 300 kilobits a second instead of 3000. Now wonder. Okay. Okay, there we go. Alright, I was about to think the computer was doing something absolutely terrible for a second. No, it's just that I had the bitrate. I accidentally typed in 300 instead of 3000, so now wonder it looked terrible. But as you can see, it is streaming just fine. I can point it at this computer here, and eventually on the stream. There we go. So there we go, live streaming working just fine. If we come over here to the computer and we pan up and we bring it a little bit closer. Why did the camera stop? We can see that it is using about 30% uh, of the CPU to stream, 40% when you move all around. We'll say roughly 40 to 45% maximum to stream 108060 on this guy, which is not bad. And also, let's keep in mind that this is up. So, if we just pause this here, then you'd have a fair bit of uh, headroom to do other things on the computer. Like, it is not at all slow, even though this is going on. Like, let's just pop open uh, Photoshop and see if the stream drops any frames as I'm doing stuff. Let's just 
Oh yeah, the stream definitely dropped some frames while that was opening. So, it will stream no problem. I can't say that you should do other things on it while you are streaming though. But, you know, we have other things to keep in mind. We've got the other scene because the webcam is still up and ready to go. So, there you go. There's me. I'll show up there. And then we've also still got, of course, the uh, display capture. So, if we remove these other scenes, I'll be interested to see how our CPU is affected. So, now we have removed those other scenes. And now, moving around maximum is about 40 instead of 45 to 50. So, we're getting almost 10% of our CPU back. So it is working great for live streaming. I can't say that you should uh, do other things on it while you're live streaming, but generally you probably aren't trying to. You could probably run some audio cues in QLab all right or something like that, but you know you can't stream and run a video at the same time. But yeah, it's working fine, and QLab is not optimized for Apple Silicon yet, but apparently they are working on it. But they don't have a timeline because apparently the... Uh, uh, OBS team on Mac OS is far smaller than what they have on Windows or what they have for Linux but apparently it is coming so that is something so as you can see the M1 MacBook Pro really has been holding its own in fact it is so good I would almost say that it is about ready for a show notice I said about I don't know that I would trust it quite yet to do a full show, even though it hasn't really, it hasn't, I haven't really had any glitches. The only glitches I have had were related to uh, external displays, and it was just getting them working. It wasn't them cutting out once they're working. Once they started working and all my testing, they worked. They didn't quit working, they worked. It's just sometimes getting them going is a little finicky which is kind of how it is now because the stupid black magic micro converter HDMI to SDI adapters in their absolute stupidity but anyway let's not get don't don't get me started on those things but it's been doing a great job battery life is absolutely top notch I did end up having to plug the thing in today. This is the first day in my week of having it that I have actually uh, had to plug in during the day. And, uh, you know, it could still be going. I plugged it in at like 19% probably about an hour ago while editing the video. It very well could still be going if I didn't plug it in. However, I just didn't want to chance it, didn't want to worry about it dying. But... Yeah, I'd say if you're one if you're on the fence about buying one of these for live production, I would say go for it, but don't expect it to be ready to jump in and start where you left off on your next show. Now, to be totally clear here, I think that I am actually going to not do what I'm saying to do. I think that I'm going to start using this uh, for my next show after Chris's break's over, uh, and rehearsals resume. We've got like seven rehearsals before a show let's see how this thing goes because my uh my 2015 here it is just not having it it's just had enough whenever it comes to qlab and outputting projection mapping to two 1080p projectors it just doesn't do yes it has the ports and oh my goodness do i miss this memory card reader so much but it just just isn't there unfortunately power just isn't there but this thing if you're thinking about buying a new mac i would say to go for it there's nothing else to say just go for it no it is not quite ready for prime time just yet I, a lot of the software i was using throughout this video is in beta however siphon works outputting the multiple displays without the use of display link or airplay is possible thanks to one of these things seriously these things are incredible and you can pick them up on ebay pretty cheaply these days i mean really so yeah go for it thanks for watching we'll see you next time and do expect a follow-up coming up within the next two weeks i will be that is a promise i will be putting out a short video within two weeks talking about how well or is it three weeks? 
we'll just say three weeks. Within three weeks, talking about my experiences using this thing for a real show, okay? I am going to use this for a real show unless something catastrophic happens during a rehearsal in which I will update you sooner than four weeks. So, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.